morning all and today I'm looking at the Arduino PWM solar charge controller again now I've changed the hardware uh, I've actually cut open another one of these uh, PWM5 charge controllers and grafted the Arduino where the uh, PIC chip used to be now this one is using the uh, potential divider which has an 82k on the top and a 20k on the bottom and a much smaller 220 puff capacitor um, across the ADC input and I've got my code to calculate a constant here it is constant set point based on the uh, battery voltage I want to achieve 13.5 volts minus zero that's because there's a notional zener but the zener's now gone 20 out of 102 is the uh, resistor divider so it's 20k out of a total of 102k that gives you this voltage relative to the battery voltage and multiplied by 1024 divided by 5 that gives you the ratio of volts on the ADC to uh, the number that comes in from the ADC the binary value but I'm struggling a bit with this and this is the uh, the loop I mean it's actually very simple you just read the analog on A1 and then there are two if statements. If the measurement is less than the set point, increment the pulse width. If the measurement is greater than the set point, decrement the pulse width. What could be simpler? Well, there is um, one thing that you have to do, and that is that you can only increment the pulse width if it's not equal to 255. Why is that? Well, it's because I'm using a byte variable and I don't want it to overflow. So I can only increment uh, the byte variable if it's not equal to 255 because if it is equal to 255 and I increment it it will roll round to zero and that's not um, what I want to happen that's not part of my model uh, similarly with decrementing I don't want to decrement uh, the byte variable if it's zero because if I do it will roll under to 255 so in my code, it's simply uh, if pulse width is not equal to zero, then you're allowed to decrement it. Of course, the converse of that is that if, if it is equal to zero, don't decrement it. Well, now that's all fine, but uh, I want to now add some proportionality to this. So I want to add a, a thing where if the measurement is some way away from my desired set point, um, I actually want to see how far away it is from the set point between measurement and set point. Don't just increment the pulse width, actually kick it up by two or three or four or five. So uh, increase it by a value greater than one. But how do I do the bounds checking? I mean, say I'm at 254 and I add two. Well, that will roll me over to zero, which is a situation which I don't want. So how do I bounds check that it has or hasn't gone over? Well, in assembly language, you'd do that using the carry flag. You'd actually add the number that you wanted to add. So we we're at 254 and I've added two. And then you say, did it set the carry flag? If it did, you know that it's rolled over and you've got an error condition and you have to uh, come back and, and modify that. So in my C naivety, I typed into Google, how do I check the carry flag from C? And here we've got in AVR freaks, do not even dream of accessing the carry flag in C. It's not guaranteed to be valid in C. And that's because C has its own use of the carry flag. There's no way that even if you could access the carry flag, it would be valid for the calculation that you're trying to check. So I have to have a fundamentally different way of thinking when I'm programming in C from when I'm programming in assembly language. And so I've come to the conclusion that uh, I can't have my pulse width variable as a byte. I wanted it to be a byte because it's simulating an 8-bit register in the Arduino, which is the uh, analog write register. And I thought byte would be the best uh, variable type. But because I can't properly bounds check it, if I'm adding any more than one or, or subtracting any more than one, I think I'm gonna to have to go to an integer variable. So using an integer variable, it will be easy to check whether it's gone over 255 because it'll go to 256 or 257. And this can go all the way up to 32767. 
uh, if I remember correctly. And similarly, if I take an integer variable below zero, it goes to minus one and minus two. So it's very easy to use simple maths to check whether you've gone out of bounds. Much more difficult to do that with a, uh, an 8-bit byte type variable because it does these sudden jumps from 0 to 255 or from 255 to 0 in the case of an overflow. So I've changed uh, pulse width to an integer type and this all sh uh, should still work by checking for these equality conditions or inequality as it is. Um, if uh, pulse width is not equal to 255 then yes you are allowed to increment it if it's not equal to zero, then you are allowed to decrement it. That should all still work, but I should now be able to, instead of incrementing and decrementing, I should be able to add this number, which may be uh, one, or it may be two, three, four, five, six, whatever, and uh, still carry out my bounds checking. So this is the sort of problem that I, as an assembly language programmer, am having learning C um, when you can't access, you know, the carry flag and the zero flag. These flags are fundamental to uh, programming in assembly language. Uh, in C, it has to be done a completely different way.